Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church. I'm so glad to see everyone here today, and I'm so glad to be able to welcome you all to our outdoor service, and thank you so much for coming out and joining us today. Um, the service today will be based on Matthew 15, verses 10 through 28, and it will be done in three different parts. I hope that you will enjoy a different kind of take on our traditional worship service as we join together once more. Please join me now in our opening sentences. How good and pleasant it is to gather in unity. How wonderful it is to gather in God's holy name. Praise the Lord. Let us come before the Lord rejoicing in prayer and in praise. Let us pray. God of all creation, may the words of our mouths, the meditations of our spirits be acceptable in your sight. Lord, may you bless our worship today and set it apart as holy. Send your Holy Spirit into this place, O Lord, to inspire us to live what we learn as disciples covered in grace, strengthened by our faith, and encouraged by our beloved community. Amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew 15, verses 20 through 20, excuse me, 10 through 20. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, fault witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Part one, the words we do not say. It's so nice to actually see you ladies. It's been a long time with all this pandemic stuff. I know it's such a shame we can't get together more often. The world seems so bleak when friends can't be together. Yes, we are all discouraged at how divided our society has become. I blame politics. I blame the media. I just wish we could all get along. We can get along, even if we don't agree on everything. Yes, we just had a lovely lunch. It's proof that people can get along, no matter how divided we are, by these outside forces. Yes, let's do lunch again soon. Somewhere, somewhere outside, I hope. I agree. I'm going to share a picture of my lunch today with my friends. Hashtag friends first. Hashtag no politics here. Hashtag no mask, no filter. a weird post for my friend. What does she mean? Hashtag no mask. I wore my mask the whole time. I should comment. I had my mask. Hashtag safety first. 
Uh, she always has to contradict me. Let's see how she likes this funny meme I found that pokes fun at her politics. Oh boy, she thinks that's funny? <laughs> I'll pose this. It's so nice we could get together with friends, even when we vehemently disagree. <laughs> We're still buds. Hashtag, I'm totally right though. Hashtag something vaguely political. Ugh, I need a distraction from all this drama. Oh no, I can't believe this is true. It's horrible. How could this person say such a thing? Have we no respect for their office? I better share it before checking the source to see if the story, the, if it is the whole story. Hashtag share. Ugh, this post isn't even true. The context is completely out of line. How irresponsible to post this. I will counter by posting a video of something equally horrible that another person or politician has done or said that furthers my own agenda. Look at this video of yet another Karen and or other people behaving horrifically, horrifically. Ooh, look at this article I found from a guy that's not a doctor but has very strong medical opinions. It must be true. It's online. I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. Ugh. Unfriend. Unfriend. I'm done. <laughs> Words have power, not just the ones that are spoken, but the ones that are put forth to represent who we are. We all have more influence than we realize. The more we put forth what is ugly about the world, the uglier it will be. The more we put forth divisiveness, the more divided it will be. Society is simply a reflection of who we are and what we put out into this world. Choose not to share what is ugly, horrible, and divisive. Share instead what is good and Christ-like, and the world will be so too. to confession. There is no limit to God's compassion for his children. Let us then, with the boldness of children of God, confess our sins. And please join me in the prayer of confession responsibly that's found in your bulletin. Lord, for the words that we have said in vain, forgive us. For the words that have hurt and condemned, forgive us. For the words that have not been spoken when something ought to have been said, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, when we do not think before speaking. Help us to remember that our words matter when we speak as Christians in this world. Amen. The second scripture reading this morning is from Matthew also, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Part 
part two, the Canaanite woman. I have come on a mission for my daughter and I will not go away empty handed. I know this man, at least I know of him. He's special, even if he is a Jew. They say he can perform miracles. They say that he is sent by God. Which one, right? Now I'm not happy about what I'm supposed to do here. I'm not happy about having to go before the Jews to ask for mercy. But what can I do? My daughter lives in torment and my heart can no longer bear to see it. My gods do not care for the plight of my child. Their words, their power, they do not help. They do not save her. Maybe he will. I approach him on my knees. I know them, I know what they think of me, so I will humble myself. You know, I thought it would feel more wrong to kneel in front of the Jews, these chosen people who hate my kind, who claim that this land is theirs even though my people have been living here for hundreds of years. But as I look at the person standing in front of me whom I'm kneeling before, whose eyes flit away from me as, as his friends and followers yell at me and demean me. Those feelings are gone. It doesn't feel strange to kneel. It feels like exactly what you should be doing. It feels right, like an act of honor to humble and bend yourself low in front of a man who could only be God. I really didn't know. I didn't know until right now, until I had drawn close. I had just hoped. I had just hoped he would be the one. But now I know. I know this is where I'm meant to be. I know that he is the only one who can help me. For what demon? could not surrender to one word uttered by the one who holds the power of God. I had a whole speech prepared to come before Jesus, but now all I can do is tremble and stammer and say, have mercy on me, son of David. I speak to him my trouble, but he looks away. What did I expect? Still, I am surprised. My eyes plead, but still he turns his head from me. God turned his head from me. I am undone. His lackeys encourage him to come away from me. They, they tell him to leave and, and they all begin to move and I am still grieving the sight of his eyes that turn from my plight, but I cannot let this go for the sake of my daughter. No, please don't go, I Lord, I beg you. I shout after them, I run after them, I will not yield, I fall in front of them on my knees time and time again, knowing full well that the Jews would never have mercy on someone as lowly as me. I fall on my knees in front of the Lord I never knew, in front of the God I never believed in, but for the sake of my child. Jesus speaks to me. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I knew this was coming. I am who I am. Lord, please help me. 
And he says, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. The dogs. His disciples sneer at their remark. I am nothing but a dog to them, and I will always be. I am a woman. I am a foreigner. I am worthy of nothing but disdain. And this will remain true forever if I cannot say something and do something in this moment to help my child. I will not let her down. Without thinking, I reply, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. What did I just say? What has just come from my mouth? In panic, I look up and I see the eyes that are finally meeting mine. His disciples are still muttering, appalled that I have spoken out, sneering and waiting for Jesus to cast me down and put me in the place like the dog they know I am. But when I look into his eyes, I don't see anger or judgment. I see something else, finally. Bright and shining, I see the corners of his mouth turn up. I see a small laugh escape easily as a sigh. He is not angry. He is bemused. I ought to have guessed that the one who would make a fool of the Pharisees in the temple might appreciate a little sass every now and then. He speaks now to me in a different way, in a warmth that makes me wonder if he hasn't known and loved me my whole life, like a father, like a friend, like a mother that I am a feeling that I know so well. He bends down to me, coming to my level to speak directly to me, ignoring the prejudices of his comrades. And they all fall silent. Woman, he says, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And I know I know at this time my request has been fulfilled. I know that it is accomplished. I can feel the shackles of my burdens being lifted and I know that my child is no longer tormented. I know he has saved her and me. All I needed was that faith. All I needed was to believe. As I walk back to my village, I am shaken by the knowledge of how powerful the word truly is. There is a power in the words that have been spoken against the Jews and the Canaanites. That power of words that bring us to contempt for one another. The power of words that bind our prejudices inside one another. There is power in the words used for advocacy. The words that I spoke today pleading my case despite being called a dog and denied. Words that showed strength. Words that proved my faith. Words that did not seek to harm, but sought mercy and reconciliation. But more than any of those words, there is power in the word. The word that comes from the mouth of the Son of God. The word that has spoken the world into creation and has healed what is most precious to me. Words have so much power. 
I hope this man can teach the world that. Now let us reaffirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Friends, we have come to the time in our worship service where we lift up our prayers to God for each other and for this world. Does anyone have a prayer request they would like to share? Seeing none, let us go to prayer. Let us approach the throne of the Lord our God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we lift up our prayers to you. Lord, we pray that you would come into the hearts of all who are gathered here, of all who are watching and listening, that you would take up all of the prayers that would lie on our hearts, all those that are unspoken or too hard to name. We give you prayers, O oh Lord. And we pray for our concern for this earth, O oh God. Especially, O oh Lord, for all of the devastation that has occurred this last week in Iowa. We pray, O oh God, for your healing hand to be upon the people who are rebuilding their homes, their lives. We pray that you would be with them, that you would strengthen them and help them. And that you would help us, O oh God, to know what is needed in this time. Gracious God, we pray also for the church. Lord, as a church, we pray that we might be your body upon this earth. That we might work equally with all the churches that proclaim your name. So that we may accomplish more and more as time goes by. God, we pray your blessings upon each and every church who are struggling in this time of pandemic. Help us, O oh God, to bring forth powerful and worthy worship. Help us, O oh God, to know your truth and to speak it out loud. We pray also, O oh Lord, for the nations. We pray, O oh God, for this nation and for all of the nations who are suffering the same ways. Today, O oh Lord, we especially lift up the nation of Beirut, the city of Beirut. We pray, O oh God, that you would help all of those who are suffering, help the city rebuild from the horrible explosions that have occurred there. God, we ask especially that you were be with our leaders that you would help every leader from every nation, everyone who cares for the people to know what it is to have a servant heart. We pray also, O oh Lord, for this community. Lift up this community of Winona, Minnesota, O oh God. Help us all to be good friends and good neighbors. Help us to know where we can help each other and lift each other up in faith and in strength. And lastly, O oh Lord, but never least, we pray for our loved ones. God, in this time, we pray not only for them, but for their strengthening, 
for their faith, for their encouragement. God, even if we cannot see all of the people that we love so much, we pray that you would please be with them. Please help them to know how beloved they are by us and by you. Be with those who are grieving. Heal those who are sick and ailing. Be with all of those, O oh Lord, at this time who are lonely. We pray all of these things, O oh God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
friends, as we depart from this place, I ask that you remember how powerful your words are, how powerful the things are that you don't say. Remember, dear friends, that the things that come from the heart ought to be heartfelt. And now, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you until we can meet again. Amen.